What's up, everyone? I'm Shaki Malik, and you're listening to the Who Drop the Popcorn podcast. The premise is simple. One of us picks a film that we know the others haven't seen. We all watch it, and we come here to discuss it. Joining us tonight is Dave McHugh. Whenever feasible, one should always eat the road, Clarice. Andy Newlands. Oh, I love coming out bacon, Sarney. Thanks. <laughs> and all the way from the north of England, Kyle Hammond. Who's little piggy now, you fucking cunt dick? <laughs> <laughs> Here's your warning. We'll be going into heavy spoilers. So if you haven't seen the film, we thoroughly recommend you watch it before listening to this. Here's another warning. The film that we've chosen today is from Denmark. So we apologise beforehand if we mispronounce any Danish names. Mads, fucking well hard. <laughs> this episode's film choice is Andy's. Andy has chosen 2021's Riders of Justice, written and directed by Anders Thomas Jensen. The film stars Mads Mikkelsen as Marcus, a soldier that returns to his hometown after receiving news that his wife died on an explosion on a train. Marcus intends to take care of his teenage daughter, but is interrupted by Otto, a statistician that thinks the incident was more than a train accident. Andy, why did you choose this film? Right, so the honest truth is, Kyle messaged me and said, have you chosen your film yet? And I haven't, <laughs> okay. like all things, it's last minute. And then he went, choose this okay, film. Yeah, how, about, how, about this, how about this thing? Kyle, why did you what? choose the film? Yeah. <laughs> oh, great, this is why he's the host with the most. <laughs> <laughs> I'd not watched it. It looked like it was up our street. This kind of, this didn't really get much recognition when it came out, but then around Christmas time, whether it was that, was that what he's got his on-demand release, I don't know, but... People start saying this is a really good film. So, we're, we're Andy, when it's next your choice to film, are you gonna? Is it gonna? We're gonna go around, Dave. You're gonna give Andy a, a tip <laughs> of, of which one to choose. Singing in the rain too. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Electric Throw boogaloo. Away. Throw away. Throw away. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, right. So, uh, I normally I keep my cards quite close to my chest about how I Everything sort of feel about. <laughs> mm. that and how I sort of feel about the film and okay because that's what a moderator should do should basically just let everyone yeah. else talk and you just sort of lead the conversation so but I would say this outright I fucking love this film so <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna just, just gonna the say third it wall. I love it wow yep. <laughs> Legend. so I watched it a few months ago and I thought oh it was really good and then re-watching it just better. recently I I oh my god better. It's yeah. just, I, I think it's perfect. Anyway, let's go Big back shit. to you, Andy. Please recap this film. Hey, 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 what's that you say? It's Andy's articulate analysis. <laughs> Good okay, luck. So Another tough one. This, Good luck. This film is, and you have to stick with me here, because from the trailer, <laughs> I was expecting like a sort of John Wick-esque non-stop action film. But basically, this film, funnily enough, is about an Egyptian man who goes mm-hmm. to the UK or Denmark, sorry, for um for a business meeting. <laughs> and um Yeah, by the way, the like, by the way, Andy, meeting, that language they're speaking was in English. So yeah. <laughs> I know. I'll tell you what, one thing about this film is uh, this is another how good this film is, is you forget its subtitles after five minutes. Like at no point was I like because you're just so like, oh God, it's the best film ever. So, so yeah, so this Egyptian guy goes um he goes to um get some food and then he gets a sandwich and he gets some orange juice, and then he gets the on Joe the and a juice. Yeah, Joe and a juice, and um, he doesn't like the sandwich because in his country the bread's a lot drier, but in Denmark it's the bread's a bit wet. So he um, he's like, oh shit, this sandwich is really bad. So he puts the sandwich and the juice in the bin, and then he just gets off the tube. And then because he did that, he caused an entire gang <laughs> to be slaughtered. And that's what this film's about. Okay, wow. that's, well, okay. That's, one t- that's one way to look at the film. Uh, <laughs> nice, well, that was good. I, I was thinking, is Andy's going to sort of uh, reword uh, and a wi- wi- Wikipedia article that he normally does? Wow. Or, but I'm glad that he've just sort of done... I was told like, to keep it brief. I was told one to keep it A one-minute recap, so mm. that's good. Um, I thought, okay, I thought cool. you were going to give me a timer as well, so I practised that, and then you didn't, so I was like, fuck, this is not... Right before oh, well. we get into this film, let's um, let's talk about the genre that this film sits in. Well, the film kind of deconstructs. So, if we talk about revenge sci-fi, movies, oh, revenge, yeah, <laughs> yes, revenge movies. Let's go through like some of our favourites. So, um, oh, lovely. 
So let's start with you, Dave. What what is your what would you say are some of your favourite? Can I guess? Can I just guess Dave's top Go one, for it. please? Go for it. Right. And be honest, Dave. Please be honest if I've got this right. <laughs> I'll always I've never never lied. All right. All right. Desperado. Yeah. Legend. But honestly, in my top ten, it, so I would say old boy. You're gonna list kill, ten. Yeah, sorry. Old boy. Don't list ten because it spoils it for us, man. Gladiator, John Wick, Django. Crow, um, oh shit, I was trying to remember them. Dead Man's Shoes, Unforgiven, and 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 Blue Ruin, and uh, Point Blank, and Get Carter. I think that's ten. Sorry if I got it wrong, but that's that's my they're my top ten revenge thrillers, which I tried to remember. So, so if you had to choose one of them, if someone, if aliens came down to oh. planet Earth and said, <laughs> you know, you're right, listen, I want to know about just Why one it, revenge right. film. <laughs> just, it's just enough that you, you make uh, every human being have that voice, but to go into galactic and give the species the same oh, drummy oh, accent oh, is fucking insane. Right. Do you know what? I think That's not a drummy accent. It is, all right, I'm fucking, I'm from Mars, <laughs> mate. All right. I'm from Mars. Oh, Jesus. John, my favourite, and I, I, I'm going to shock you here, is probably Get Carter. Something about Get Carter, I just can't deal with it. When he's on the, he just gets on the train in a in the best suit ever, and he just goes up to Newcastle and fucks motherfuckers up, and he just does it perfectly. He sets people up. It's beautiful. Get Carter, M- Michael Caine. If you're listening, you're the main man. You're the man. Because <laughs> the impression just in of ca- Michael Caine there, but I can't, so I won't. J- just in case <laughs> no one's ever told Michael Caine that he was a good actor and, and a great, great British guy, I'm telling you now, Michael, you're a Renowned podcast listener as well. <laughs> I lo- Honestly, yeah. Get Carl all the way. Uh, dun, 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 Dave, could you do... Bum, yeah, what's I was going to ask you. Dave, could you do the rendition, your rendition of the theme tune? Everyone be quiet for this. Boom, 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 that's a good song that mate that's uh, as good as it gets well you're doing a man for stuff from that michael kane <laughs> it just he literally just never smiles <laughs> it makes anything. no sense <laughs> oh man that is get car all the way okay uh enough. how about you kyle what about your your some of your favorites uh of revenge movies well, one of my favourite films of all time is Dead Man's Shoes. Yes. Fucking, it's unreal, uh, man. It's so good. Uh, you're, you're, like, um, you're like a big Shane Meadows fan, right? Not really, no. I, I mean, <laughs> what, I've not seen anything he's done Christ, recently. I've hell. seen... Uh, <laughs> no. All right, next question. What? No, no, no. So, <laughs> what, what has he done? So, <laughs> this is England is good. Like? The TV yeah. show was hit and miss, though. Although the one series where... Well, I know, that's the thing. Uh, um, yeah, the rapey dad about... was fucking unreal. Yeah, uh, Dead Man's Shoes, obviously great. Room for Romeo Brass is all right. That Stone Roses film he did weren't great, and I'm not seeing anything Sorry, since I... then. Did you just say the really? rapey dad? <laughs> that's what I was wondering. What's he talk? The TV did series... Did you say of... the rape? Yeah. The, the TV it... series of... Uh... This is England. This is England. Yeah, so... I haven't seen that. I, 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 I've been curious to check that out. It went on for three series, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, right? it's hit and miss, but there's, I think it was the second series, or I'm not sure which one, but there's one where the dad is like a... One of the... You know, the, the group, one of their dads is like a wow. up rapey dude. Who, who it, made... It's dark that? as fuck, though, that series, but it's really good. And Stephen Graham is, like, fucking amazing in that series. Yeah. Oh, the man. The man. Who who made Down Terrace? Who did Down Terrace? That was uh, Ben Wheaton. Yeah, that that's in the same kind of... It's not a revenge thriller in any way, but... Well, I guess, maybe it is, actually, but... Man, viewers, check out Down Terrace as well. That's all part of that. And then watch Kill List as well for gritty British drama. Kyle, have you seen Down, Down Terrace? No, mate, I've never heard of it. But, uh, yeah, Dead Man's Shoes, a great one liners in that film. I just love it where he's playing pool and that guy's like, what are you looking at? Kind of like, goes, mm, what? what are you looking at, mate? You, you cunt. Brilliant. And then <laughs> where he's yeah, like, the, lad, the lads have got it in their head that, that you've been, yeah, it was me. It was me. It's fucking yeah. badass. Just the way he just delivers his lines. Every line is just delivered Stick, Sticking his jaw out, looking him in the eye, and he, yeah, it was me. Yeah, it was me. You're not scared of me, are you? Got you fucking, fucking there, mate. mate. Got you fucking You're fucking mate. there, yeah. mate. Now get in your car. And fucker. And also, like one of the early films, and I didn't. I saw this film as a teenager, but then like it was only sort of years later when I didn't realize that it was 
Shane Meadows that directed it is a film called 24 7 I think it's called 24 7 where Bob Hoskins he basically takes in a bunch of kids and like teaches them how to bop that's a really good film but yeah Shane Meadows what's he doing now is I he... don't know I'm not sure what he's done for, for a while to be honest he spent years doing that Stone Roses documentary didn't he and it was pretty crap to be honest really yeah I haven't seen it yeah that Stone Roses was just it was just depressing to watch. It was hard yeah. to watch because it was just like, oh man, it's just such a shame. Whereas like the Supersonic documentary was fucking brilliant. Even though he's not made a film since that Stone Roses one, 2013. So the thing is that that Stone Roses documentary, is it because of just the subject matter or was just the way it was? It's just it's, it's, it's weird. It's just kind of sad because Stone Roses broke up way too soon. But could argue they had that one perfect album, which makes them bigger legends than ever but the documentary was just kind of sad because it just shows them early doors arguing and stuff like that whereas supersonic was like ah oh, there was a time where oasis a good four years where oasis were on top of the world and they'd argue and stuff but they were still with it mm. it's hard it's hard to describe but it's just that that fucking stone roses documentary was just depressing from start to finish i found yeah. whereas like is that because the stone roses didn't really have the heady heights that oasis had I, I, yeah but they would have i think they would have maybe have been as big but like even when like the story of talk tonight when noel sort of disappears for a bit and stuff it's just fucking i'm like almost in tears watching that stuff and it just i don't know i don't know i can't really describe it but that Super what would your alien mentioned. friends say, Chappie, about the Stone Roses? <laughs> oh, I fucking love Manchester. Ah, right. fucking this love. is the best conversation I've had because, you know, you're talking about <laughs> films I've been checking out. Uh, <laughs> been here, uh, been there, been Manchester. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, we apologise to the Mancunian listeners. Absolutely. Uh, Completely. Listening to this. Uh, yeah. we're not and, taking... uh, and our non-British listeners, you probably have no idea who the fuck Stone Roses were. <laughs> Because they no one outside of England does. Or where Manchester is. Nice. Okay. How about you, Andy? Then what? What? What about oh, you? Easy, what, what? easy, an eclectic array. So naturally, Cape Fear, Braveheart, Desperado, Django Unchained, <laughs> Cape Fear, right? Bravo. Cape man. Fear was, being in it a revenge yeah, movie. That's it is because he was originally fucked over. So the he was originally fucked over. Yes, he was. Yeah, man. Yes, he was. Right, so true. Has anyone yeah, seen so the original? And. Yeah. No, I, I got it on DVD, but I've never seen the original. I need to watch that shit. Did I say Gladiator, Kill Bill, John Wick, Braveheart? Yeah. But oh, my, Jesus. my favourite ones, so for me, oh, fucking hell. And this is, you can debate this to the end of time, but there's this documentary film called The King of Kong, and it's <gasps> fucking mental. And like, it's not a revenge <laughs> film as such, but this guy in there trains his mind to like avenge like this fucking Billy motherfucker. So watch The King of Kong. You might disagree with me, but there's that. You've now I think it. Jaws That's and Finding one. Nemo are two of the best revenge <laughs> films of all time. So, like, <laughs> think about Finding Nemo. Like, because he fucks that dentist place up in the end. So, Finding Nemo's up there. Jaws is up there. I'm going to put The Dark Knight in this category as well, because I think Batman's all about revenge. But my favourite, favourite of all time is Desperado. Oh, you legend. Gladiator. I can't believe I missed Gladiator. Now, that is a... That is you a, said I believe you, were. Did you I say that? Yeah. Oh, God, said- sorry, sorry, forgive me. Because... That's, man, when you think of the films that kind of follow Gladiator and just miss the mark by so far, about five or six films. But whereas Gladiator, I, it's one of the best films ever made. Oh, and I was glad I, I was glad I got to tell What's-His-Face that it was the best ever. I think he appreciated that. What's his oh, name? Oi, What's-His-Face? Yeah. I really liked Gladiator. Mm-hmm. Ah, Russell. Russell, <laughs> Russell, that's right, Russell Brand. I forgot to tell him. I to tell <laughs> Russell Brand. <laughs> oh, how are you doing? You're what? Right. Oh my God, <laughs> I can't believe you like Gladiator. So that's my <laughs> Russell Brand impression. Actually, can I mention Taken? Because Taken should be like... It's yeah, nah, hates that film. Boo. Oh, fucking hell, he hates everything about Liam. It's a good action film, but it's not a good revenge film. Because in a weird way, he's not, he's not really taking revenge. It's a rescue film. But we're gonna Ooh, we're gonna talk about Taken. I think we should we're gonna talk about Taken a bit later on. What about the Equalizer? Yeah, yeah, that's quite good actually. Well, I mean, to be honest, Denzel. I'm surprised that no one's actually mentioned the the big kind of revenge film, which is Man on Fire. Oh, because it's so shit. It's so shit. Shafi, ask me the question again. I'll just give you one film. Go on, go Finding on, go Nemo. On. And <laughs> Andy, what is your very favourite? Oh, and I'd have to say it's the First Wives Club, Shafi. <laughs> <laughs> first Wives Club. <laughs> great, fantastic. Okay, great. So, Shafi, what about yours? Uh, so, <laughs> um, so I'm glad you asked, Kyle. So, uh, you guys mentioned Old Boy. So, the, that director, Park Chan, uh, the 
they basically call it the the vengeance trilogy so old uh old boys one of them that's the middle film the first film was a film called sympathy for mr vengeance um which is good and then the third one is called lady vengeance and that's really good lady if there's one film to watch um well old boy obviously but lady vengeance as well is brilliant uh, uh, dave you seen that or no oh, that's the one i have that's the one i haven't seen it. have you seen sympathy for mr vengeance yeah yeah do you like that yeah man it's I, I still think it's kind of a, a quite a far out there film but i did enjoy it yeah there's another korean film called the man from nowhere that's that's yeah. sort of like a that there's quite got quite a similar plot to man on fire oh wow there's a Bollywood remake of that called uh, Rocky Handsome. I actually prefer the Bollywood remake, but yeah, um, those are two films that are worth checking out as well. Thank you, yeah. Shafi. No probs. That's fine. But yeah, I think my all-time favourite, as Dave mentioned, is Point Blank. I fucking love that film. Oh, damn, right. Yeah, wrong answer, mate. It's Dead Man's Shoes. Okay, so let's move on to uh, Riders of Justice. So, yes. Holy shit, I forgot about that film. How about we start with you, Dave? What is your overall opinion of this film? I absolutely loved it. It is fan. Here we go. Here we go. And it's like, great. Yep, it's yep, beautiful. Yep, 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 yep. yep. It's I'm, beautiful. I'm, we're changing roles. Because, and like Andy said, it, you didn't realise you were reading subtitles, even though there was a lot of subtitles with very clever Danish people talking statistics. It was brilliant. It was such a unique film that I can't describe, but it's just so so yep. wonderful yep. and like i said to andy when we were watching together i wish i had intelligent friends because my life would be better <laughs> I'm, stuck with dumb ass- I'm stuck with dumb asses like you and that was my yeah. ultimate theory and maz mickelson is again just one of my favorite actors of all time he is just nails everything he does he is on it 100 percent, and i do mean 100 percent. every every time he is behind the camera oh, sorry in front of the camera even i'm sure he'd be a great director but he is <laughs> the man isn't he yeah. he is perfect he is, he is just he perfect is. he looks perfect he is perfect and i'd love to meet him and have a pint of cronenberg with him uh, one day you mean carlsberg no not, no sorry carlsberg sorry i'd suck him off <laughs> <laughs> you gushing about him is he, I, I think that's you. you just gushing about him in general how well, does Hannibal, yeah. Hannibal is where my true, true love is. Yeah, that's, my, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So, oh, my God, that's amazing. Uh, how would you say he fares in this film, though? Well, because he is, it's not the antithesis of Hannibal, because Hannibal's a badass as well. But he's, he's kind of unrecognisable from Hannibal, but he is also a badass killer in this. But he's just, he, it's not deadpan, but it is deadpan. He just, I don't know how he just plays play the role. situation yeah. as it is to yeah. him. He just yeah. all the madness even when he like, around him. he like punches his daughter's boyfriend straight in the face, and he's like, "I'm sorry, I shouldn't have punched your boyfriend in the face." <laughs> <It's> <laughs> invite like him around for dinner. <laughs> invite him around for dinner. Yeah, it's just like so. I'm sorry, I did that. Okay, invite him around for dinner. We can be friends. It's just oh, it's yeah, but just Dave, so that, good. That follows when he killed the guy and he disappeared for a bit, and he just walks around the corner and goes, "Sorry, that was a mistake." <laughs> <laughs> That's a fucking gold yeah, shit, like exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have broken that guy's neck in cold blood. In front well, I've made some mistakes in my broad life. Daylight. Shit. I know when we fuck up at work. No, honestly, okay, I, nice. I, again, this this film is just too hard to describe, isn't it? It's just yeah, fucking awesome. It's genius, absolute genius. Okay, how about you, Kyle? Uh, what 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 about your your opinion on this film? Yeah, so I watched it twice. So watched uh, the first time. I actually watched it the day after Andy announced it because I was just desperate to watch it. And yeah, and I thought it was good. Um, I, what I kind of the first time this is probably me being dumb. The subtitles, the dialogue's really fast, so you do miss bits of the subtitles. But yeah, I still really enjoyed you're it. You're a slow but... reader. You were in Group 1 English, Carl. But the second oh, time... Oh, you were in Group 1. I was, yeah. The second time, fucking... <laughs> I watched it last night. Brilliant. Fucking loved it, man. It's so good. It's. Yeah, it I is. wasn't expecting it to be... I thought it was just going to be like a revenge action film, whatever, but I wasn't really expecting the comedy element of it, and that's probably my favourite part of it, to be honest, because that Emmentaler dude is fucking hilarious. Man. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's because uh, Andy mentioned that watching the trailer, it feels like a kind of a revenge action film. And even if you look at the poster of the film, it's just basically Maz Mixer, like holding a gun um yeah, yeah with that kind of stoic face i think 
I, I mean, I guess the director probably maybe isn't involved in, in the marketing, but it does feel like like it's an intentional like trick they pulled. Like they yeah. said, oh, they oh, said this is you're you're expecting this type of film. N- now we've got you in the seat. We want to we we want to basically else. give you something which falls within the genre, but tells you something about the genre that you're you're expecting to watch. So wow, um, wow. That's what I think anyway. Do you really think it was misdirection? That's mad. That's ballsy. You're already making me watch a film with subtitles and then you're going to fuck with me again a double whammy <laughs> even the first it's act mad. there's no really kind of comedic elements in the first act it's only in the second yeah. act when four guys are all together in the barn that it starts to like get yeah. funny in fact it's first when they go to Emmentaler's house and he's bringing the pizza and there's just some <laughs> great one liners in that bit it's fucking brilliant it's oh, brilliant it's <laughs> so yeah apparently um, the, the director the right director said that he wrote loads more jokes for the film but he decided to sort of cut loads out because he didn't want it to undercut like a lot of the, the sort of drama in the film yeah wow. but yeah i you know I, I mean i could just talk for hours about this film but one thing i love about this film is that it's sort of like um maz mickelson it's like he's in another film like it's, yeah, as if, he is, it's, yeah, he's, yeah. he's sort of it's sort of like um a, like a movie character has sort of come out <laughs> of the screen and it's sort of <laughs> joining the real world. That's what it feels like. Last action hero. I guess I'm going to sort of go into, I don't know, maybe I should just do it now, but regarding regarding Taken, okay, uh, like... Uh, <laughs> no, no, if this is like a rant, do it at the end, maybe. Well, yeah, but is that, it's not about this film. The rant is okay. about this film. Okay. Time think for Kyle and Sharon. <laughs> Welcome to the argument. No, Jesus <laughs> Christ, Kyle. Just let it go. So, I mean, <laughs> r- regarding Taken, I remember... <laughs> watching the trailer for Taken like years and years ago when it was first announced and I remember showing it to Dave I'm really excited about it going oh my god like, Liam Neeson like the dude like, from Schindler's List and yeah. like, Rob Roy and all that <laughs> stuff like you know this prestige actor and he's like dude, like oh my god I can't yeah I was like really excited for it and then when I actually watched it so my opinion of, of Taken it's not a kind of revisionist the first time I watched it I still I didn't buy it like I just thought yeah. this, this film's ridiculous ridiculous and it was sort of unintentionally funny and oh um, no you're being too mean really did no, you really think that in 2008 you thought that I did, I did. I you thought, liar. I thought, no, no, awful, I, was, I knew you were going to say liar. this as well. I, I knew know, you were going to say you. Because, I don't you. no, it's true though. I, I remember Alex. like right from the beginning, I thought, this is just really silly. And I think the thing that bothers me is like how much of a weirdo Liam Neeson's character is. And, <laughs> and, and I love that this film is basically saying to Matt Maz Milkson's character, you're not right. Instead yeah. of actually going out and hunting. So in Taken, another thing that bothered me was just the fact that that film just went in a straight line. Like nothing bothered him in his like quest. It was almost like, you know, when, when after he hung up that phone after the, on chance, good luck, whatever. Like mm. it was always like it's like yes, right. I'm gonna do this now. I can't wait. It's great. I knew this would happen. Like he's like he's sort of excited about it. No, and, Colin, you're lying. How dare you? He's definitely got a boner, hasn't he? When he says that, like <laughs> he's saying, good luck, lies. Sharp, Kyle. Yeah. Sharp Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> so excited. Sharp. No, you didn't think that. Lies. <laughs> like it just moves in like a straight line. Nothing bothers him. Like no, you know, no one kind of gets the better of him at all and what i love about this film is that every time maz mickelson is gonna do something he's gonna kind of go on a crazy sort of violent spree these three geeks are sort of getting in his way <laughs> no you gotta talk to your daughter mate and you gotta you know i just love that i love, I love that you know the director must have watched Satan and thought, this, you know, this isn't right in the real world this is you know this is basically you know these are because a lot of these revenge films this is it's about grief right Right? It's about dealing with the grief. And the, the way they have to deal with the grief is by finding the person who's responsible for it and murdering them. And I li- and, and just on top of that, this is a film that says, well, actually, it's not as simple as finding one person that is responsible for your loved one's wife, the, 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 people, the person that you're avenging. It's saying it's not as simple as what, like a, a dangerous gang, like a, a cartoon villain, you know, so it just it's sort of easy for this person to take out their event. Yeah, I just, I, as I said, I could, I, just talk, I could talk for hours about how much I love this film, but I think, I feel like it's in sync with how I sort of feel about, you know, revenge, the sort of the genre. But come on, like, so you can't dismiss 
every other. Listen, I'm not dismissing it because I think if you think about it, like if you watch Commando and you watch Taken, right? Oh, so it's Com- Commando and Taken <laughs> have got a very similar plot, right? You know, someone's daughter gets kidnapped. Yeah. I think with Commando, it's not revenge because the daughter yeah, is yeah, still alive. Still alive. Yeah, yeah. So I don't think it's a, it's not a revenge. Yeah, film. but I think what I'm saying though is that Commando, I think, knows it's late. It kind of says, let's just go over the top with it. Let's almost get, get a bit, you know, cartoonish with like how badass he is. And, you know, and we, yeah. and we love it. And we do love it. And let's stress that to the viewers. We do love Commando because Commando does what it says on the Yeah, team. exactly. It's you beautiful. Know, and I, 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 I think I think if you want to watch, Hammer. why not? Why would you hold back? Like we say with Mortal Kombat, don't hold back. Enjoy the film that it is and go all out. No, I, you know, Mortal but Kombat I, I think I, those, those are the films. <laughs> Those are the films that I think know their lane. There's something that bothers me. There's lots of things that bothers me about Taken, but I think that main character is uh, someone who really bothers me. I remember watching it thinking, you're not right. You're like, he's having a go at his ex-wife going, you live in your bubble. And it's like, he's like really sort of, uh, he didn't seem like a sane person. No. Do you think I'd let you marry a man and not look him up on the CIA database? I know he's got... <laughs> Contacts well, the, 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 stuff. the weirdest <laughs> thing about Taken is uh, is there's the subplot about his daughter wanting to g- follow you too on a world be a singer world tour. Yeah. You oh, too, like out of, every, yeah. out of everyone, <laughs> not Britney Spears, but fucking you too. <laughs> like what? And I remember yeah. in uh, <laughs> you two are the best band ever, Shafi. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, they're the best band. You two, I once met Bono. I didn't know when did the pirate the Bono went ahead. <laughs> we had Guinness, but I still think Liam Neeson is, is convincing as a hard man. I didn't say. I that. didn't say he's not he, convincing. He, he he still looks like a bad motherfucker. He's six foot four. He looks like a tough guy. I like the Northern Irish accent. It makes you hard and makes I think hard, he is convincing. It? <laughs> <laughs> it's a high heat. Liam Neeson is a, is a convincing badass, I think, regardless of the film. I think you can cast Liam Neeson as a badass. So I remember, like, I remember <laughs> being in the, uh, when I was in the restaurant, and uh, I think I told you, I think I told someone about this, but I, I, because I was joking about the film to like a table, and I was saying that um, I was talking about that U2 subplot, and I said, I honestly thought that at the end, when Liam Neeson gets that boat, that it's actually Bono on that bed with, <laughs> with all the <laughs> prostitutes. And the then I remember up. some girl got really offended she's like why, why would he do that why would he agree why would he agree to a film like that and be be a sex trafficker so I was just like, oh, <laughs> this, is, this is why Shafi's restaurant closed down because Shafi's too familiar with the restaurant so look Shafi I just wanted some Papa Doms what the fuck are you talking about I don't want to hear your out there film theories no 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 listen <laughs> I think Bono <laughs> yeah, was exactly. a film. That's what I Yeah, if we continue the restaurant, it'd be like, oh, did you just go to cinema? What film did you watch? <laughs> oh, Dune, was it? Did you watch Dune? Well, let me start. <laughs> well, let me tell you. <laughs> Mortal Kombat, are you mental? <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of the now occupation of Palestine. Now watch this YouTube clip of right, a good mate. action scene. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> look, mate, please, just four carlings, please, just get us four carlings. We didn't want to get involved in this shit, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now you work in a boring tax office. <laughs> God damn. Uh, we talk go. about taking far too long, man. Let's get back to the film, Andy. What's your okay, thoughts sorry, on the film, sorry. mate? Hello. It's, it's Andy's turn, isn't it? Andy, how are you doing on poker t- tonight? How are you doing? I, do you know what? I'm not. I'm listening intently to everything you guys are saying. So I, um, I understand from that you don't like Taken. Sorry. Uh, okay. So yeah. Um, what what were your highlights of the film? What are your favourite parts of the film? So I this this film for me was. I mean, God, we've not really explained what the hell happens, but it's <laughs> like the, the opening scene. Like when, when his wife dies on that tube, I've never seen anything like that that was like fucking yeah, it's hell not I, thought, yeah. I thought like strap in I'm this is going to be some next level action film but um, as I say Dave was at my house and um, it was quite good because every 20 minutes Dave would disappear to shit himself on the toilet for about an hour so I had a lot of time to think about each, each standard bit. It's you. and then like the second time he went it's usually you that does that I yeah I know it's no, it's fine. I got locked it's fine. in I couldn't work out the lock from his toilet was Dave stuck. got stuck in my toilet for about 15 minutes and we didn't know he was stuck in there so I had a lot of time to like um, yeah, stuck in your toilet, about more like... <laughs> yeah, his house is like 250 years old, so it's a complicated building. You sure he just didn't have a quick session in the hot tub? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mads Mickelson Boner had to get take control of that. Yeah, this, 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 like, 
out of all the films we've watched, there's a, there's like there's only a few on this podcast that I've I've gone away thinking, fuck, I'd love to have read the book here. And like this is another one of those films because like this whole film felt to me like it could be like an insane mental add-on, like online play of GTA five, where like fucking do you know Lester Crest, the like computer dude? Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, they he he these three guys were just insanely funny, and I just I just loved the way there was so much going on in this film. So you've got the revenge element, you've got these statistical geniuses who, despite everything making sense throughout the whole film, are actually wrong all the way because it's just this fucking nice Cairo man who goes back to his family and moans about wet bread that causes the whole fucking thing here. Then you've got like this mad gimp guy who's like so polite he's always hoovering he's offering to, like oh, are you tired do, do you want to fuck me in the ass before you go to sleep you're more than welcome like what, <laughs> the, what the fuck is that <laughs> thank you so much fucking me in the ass oh my yeah, god you, you, ru- ass, you ruined the joke because i was going to say that at the end of the session i was going to oh, say really? well, how's everyone how's everyone doing is anyone tired well <laughs> do you want to fuck me in the ass I'm, still do it man you still do it we'll delete this bit you out. should still do it but no, nah, it was great. I just like the laying of this film. Like you've got like you know you were saying before, like taking is just like a, a like a track almost like A to B. But with this film, you've just got like you've got these like geniuses playing the fake psychologist. The daughter doesn't know what's going on. You've got this like mad boyfriend getting punched in the face. You've got Mads Mikkelsen as this insane general in the army or whatever. Just doesn't doesn't laugh once. He's just his goal doesn't change throughout this whole film. And then when he finds out like like that bathroom scene where he finally breaks down. That's insane. I've not, yeah. I've not seen somebody lose it like that in, in a film before. But he, he, he likes to stay. like properly headbutts the mirror. Yeah, he goes for right. it. He goes for uh. it. He goes for it. And like it was quite funny because I mean, David had a few drinks as we were watching it, and we were just like chatting a bit about the film, which we normally don't do for the films and the podcast. It was quite a new experience for us. But like mm. the film for me, I left it thinking, "Fucking hell, I've never seen a film that is so light and so dark all at the same yeah. time." It's yep. just tremendous. Like there's just there's just so much going on in this film. So um I think this goes in my top three of all the films that we've we've watched wow, so far. Nice. This film wow. is fucking brilliant, like absolutely nice. brilliant. And I like, again I told Jen, I was like, Oh Jen, like we're watching a film for the podcast. It's um she's like, What's it about? I'm, like, I'm not sure, but it's probably like a John Wick thing, Danish and subtitles. And she's like, Nah, I'm all right, thanks. <laughs> but again, great shout out to the podcast because I wouldn't have watched a film like this if it weren't for this. So yeah, Kyle, yeah. great shout. Legend. I actually plan to have this as my choice for later on the year. Mm. Oh, maybe you can swap with Kyle for whatever his A or B was. Uh don't worry, but I've got loads of other films in the pipeline. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about you, David? What your sort of highlights of the film? Highlights? Any I don't really have them. No, no, so. I, I don't have a highlight. No, because I felt like this film doesn't have highlights in my mind. It just, it's just awesome. I don't feel there's like these moments that stand out from this okay, film. Okay, thanks, so, Dave. So, yeah, you, you laughed any your head your off, favorite, though. I think you quite like the, um, yeah. the interaction between the, the statistical geniuses. You know, like, when yeah. you first yeah. start thinking, like, this film isn't an action film. When the, when the guy's like, just be nice to me. Why are you being yeah. a dick? That's when you start to go, oh, there's a bit more to this. And then it just gets funnier and funnier and funnier. Yeah. When the fat guy was on screen, I was having a great time. Yeah. So oh, that, so that was funny. mine as well. I'm, I'm going to read some of these one-liners here that he said. Uh, uh, so <laughs> when they're doing the algorithm to, to try, try and find the Egyptian guy, it's like, I'm telling you, there's no fucking balls match piss in Denmark. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I won't stand for this cunt, dig. Take your pizza and get out. It's fine. You don't need the pizza, you fat pig. <laughs> and then Honestly, when Mad kills that guy, he starts kicking him. Week. Who's a little piggy now, you fucking cunt, dig? <laughs> <laughs> when he's when he's saying to Mad because I don't touch the fucking wires. <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, it it really is great. It is a great spot. <laughs> Piss more. Really how fun. can I track anything in such a small cunt process? <laughs> <laughs> fucking cunt dude. oh my god but the action was badass as well though that's oh, amazing yeah, 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 amazing. yeah, yeah, yeah. well what i really like because the thing is is that when i was saying regarding it being like that anti-taken it still gives you that that genre thrill but you know yeah. that that ending sort of reminded me of like patriot games you know the ending of when they do the attack on the house and they kind of switch all the lights off and stuff uh so it still kind of gives and the actions like were well, even though they're in sort of they're sort of short bursts they're still Really cool. Yeah. 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 Dave, you know, you're a big uh, X Files fan. Oh, it's the biggest. I listened to another podcast and they said that, you know, the, the three lone gunmen. Yeah. Yeah, he, they said that this is this film was basically if the three lone gunmen had their own action movie. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Mulder just loses his shit one day. Yep, brilliant. Yeah. I'd love that. Yeah. <laughs> I think they had their own TV show as well. Yeah, they did the spin-off. They had a spin-off. Yeah. Nice. I think it was like right. two seasons or something like that. <laughs> it's not often I, I kind of think this when, when I watch a film, but I really would love a sequel to this film. Because yeah, I, nice I feel like with every character, the, you know, they we're only sort of scratching the surface of like who they are. Yeah. Like it's been like, yeah. like the it's like one liners, isn't it? And then you're like, you could just from that you can just get why they're like they are. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So so the who's the the middle guy, like the older guy who pretends to be the therapist? Len Leonard. Yeah, so so because he sort of like breaks down in the middle of a of him being a fake therapist and talks about him being well, it's mm. like inferred that he, he was abused as well. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, um, and when he's in the field with his pants Oh my on. God, that's amazing. Oh my God, yeah. What the fuck? I said to Dave, if that was in Blood Simple, I would have liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it actually reminded me of a viral video from a few years back where uh, two guys are about to have a fight in Walmart in America and one of them just gets completely naked and the other guy is just like, nope, see you later. I'm out. <laughs> see, that's the, that is the best form of defense. That's what, that's that's what, uh, that's what Eric Andre did. did. You know the er- Eric Andre show? Yeah, yeah. He he basically tries to touch Flavor Flav's dick and then <laughs> Flavor, Flav, Flavor Flav gets up and is about to hit him. So he takes all his clothes off and then steps in and gets all naked and goes into a bath and then <laughs> Flavor Flav goes... That motherfucker ain't joking. <laughs> <laughs> so I think what the rumor is that this possibly will be remade. I uh, have oh, a Western no. remake to it, but oh, and I but think I think the uh, the same sort of creative team going to be behind it. But who do you think could play the Mads Mikkelsen role in Matt Hollywood? Damon. Mads Mikkelsen, just Matt keep Damon. him. Liam Neeson. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, keep him. Absolutely keep him. Liam, Liam Neeson. Is that what you think? <laughs> so the Otto guy looks like Seth Rogen, so just do Seth Rogen. Or the Rogen. guy from Freddie Mercury. <laughs> What's that crazy bastard called? Remy Malek. <laughs> uh, I think um, Daniel Craig would be good in that lead role, actually. Oh, wow. Wow. Interesting. Stoic face and stuff. Uh, Kyle, have you got anything to say about the film and the factoids? Uh, no, let's keep going, man. We've already scratched the surface, really, haven't we? Um... Okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I you know my favorite part my favorite part of the film was before before the kind of final bad guy gets killed, he goes, What did we do? <laughs> I love yeah. that. I love that. Yeah. Like, what did really think about it? He's probably like, Why are all my yeah. dudes getting killed? Like I don't, yeah, it doesn't get make no what's sense. Going on. <laughs> I just <laughs> love the sort of like randomness of it and uh because that's what life is, you know. It's just mm. uh, he must have been buzzing though when when the guy died on the train that was going to testify against him. He must have been like, "Fucking sweet, oh, no. <laughs> we're off, man." <laughs> we're off. Yeah, but then mental. like, but then like, random people end up just get <laughs> of his gang just end up getting killed. And uh, yeah, that scene where they go to that guy's house and he basically like pulls the gun to his face to Mads Mikkelsen's face and you just think well you're asking for it come on yeah. Mads Mikkelsen <laughs> he doesn't look like a and also another thing is that you think because you're sort of asking questions about the, being on the train and stuff like that he's kind of annoyed that that he's just being bothered but the reason why is because he was in the middle of fucking a rent boy's ass <laughs> <laughs> but you don't he's even know down yet. because uh, the uh, the Hans Zimmer inspired score the like kicks in, mm. you're like, oh shit, he's this is gonna go down now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. Then he kind of goes in to clean up after the evidence, and just sees Rempo, and he's like, yep, bye. <laughs> 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 like, just close the door, and that's it. Doesn't even mention it afterwards. But well, like, it's really yeah. That that kid ends up just being like really sweet, and he ends up having his own Instagram account <laughs> about <laughs> kind of being like you know like cooking recipes and stuff and. Um, so he had some funny one lines as well, didn't he? Uh, I'm waiting for Andy to tell us the whole thing about this being about God because he takes his chain off and gives it to the girl. You guys are so start- stupid that you didn't fucking think that last film was about religion. You're fucking insane, a lot of you. <laughs> fucking insane. <laughs> when they said, let's play Star of Africa, and he's like, I had a colleague called Star of Africa, a regular killed him on New Year's Eve. <laughs> 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 I just remembered that. that Look at the dinner table. Oh, <laughs> 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 
And then he tells that really <laughs> shit story, doesn't he? And everyone's just like, oh, fucking hell. Yeah, what the fuck was that story all about? It's like Dave's yeah. old one word reviews where he talked for 10 minutes. Which <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like, you don't, you all, that story has not changed your life at all. It's just, uh, it's like, thanks for that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's lovely the way there's like this sort of, um, it's, they end up creating this family at the end. And you see like yeah. uh, Masvik in a nice Christmas jumper. Yeah. How are they not dead or in prison at the end? That was just a bit confused. I guess because they came onto their property. Yeah, they I mean, there, really there, 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 there is the no police. And stuff, would they? <laughs> there is no police other than the beginning. We're like, yep, <laughs> don't really give a shit. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, if a known biker gang came onto your lawn and you kill them all. Happy days. Cups for a party. That's, fuck, that's quality when the fucking statistical motherfuckers just come and mow everyone down. What, what's the rotund guy called? What's his name? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, because he, he earlier on, like, he ends up losing it where, when um, he's out in the street about to kind of kill someone. But, oh, but yeah. no, he, he sort of, um, they all like band together and he's still got the machine gun at the end, gunning, mowing everyone down. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah, so what was weird was if you Google like reviews of this, the reviews weren't great really for from like some of the. Well, it's funny you say that. Like the Guardian and stuff gave it three out of five. Mark Hermo was like, "I don't get it. Not for me." Yeah. Have you watched? Me and Dave watched it afterwards, and we were like, Mark, "He's fucking miles." Yeah, he miles made it sound off, like yeah. some slapstick shit. Mm. Like that's you guys bullshit. put so much clout on. Well, just critics in general, but definitely like someone like Mark Gomo because, you know, I can talk for hours about how much bullshit is Mark Gomez full of. I think this is a film that is going to be talked about. I mean, it's already being, t- it's already on lots of people's end of year best list for 2021. And yeah, how I ended up hearing about it was sort of like in the middle of last year. Um, so a friend uh, of mine, his name's uh, Alex Rayo, who has a YouTube channel called uh, You Can Emotions and, and his, uh, his Twitter handles uh, at Head Exposure. And he, I remember sort of messaging him and he, he said, this film is definitely the best film like you see in this this year. So I was like, yeah, I've got I've got to watch it. And it's only sort of towards the end of last year that I end up. I still haven't seen another round, but Kyle, you ended up watching that as well, right? Oh man, yeah. So I yeah decided to do a double bill. So yeah, so the day after I watched this film the first time, I watched another round and wow, really good film. And then at the time, I thought, yeah, I preferred that. To, what a uh, night! Of justice. What a Gee, night! Thing is, that's like a time at the end. And then. When I rewatched Rise of Justice, I then changed my mind again, saying oh, I preferred this. But yeah, that's a, that's a great <laughs> film. And Dave, honestly, that film will speak to you in so many ways. So you need to watch oh, it. Oh, mate, honestly, I, I can't wait to watch it. I will do. It's on Sky, so go around Andy's and watch it. You'll <laughs> love it as well, Andy. What else did we love uh, Maz Mikkelsen in, uh, Dave? Well, I loved I loved the Mikkelsen role. And I think for a lot of people, that would have been the first time we've ever seen Maz Mikkelsen. And then I guess Hannibal, really, I'm just throwing out the cliches. And... I can't, oh, I have to confess, there's only a couple of other films that I've seen him in, and yeah, I just, I just love the dude, I'm, I'm, I love him. Oh I love god, him. he's single-handedly responsible for bringing down a fucking Death Star, man. Mm. He was really underused, I thought, in Doctor Strange and in Rogue One. In Rogue One, everyone's underused. Yeah. Oh, so rogue as fuck. Oh yeah, I forget it was in Doctor Strange. Yeah. Have you seen The Hunt, Shuffy? Yeah, so The House is about to mention The Hunt is brilliant. I've not seen it. And The Hunt is a, it's a tough watch, but it's a, it's a really good film. I would, I would definitely recommend that. Day. I think everyone would really like that film. You guys would really like that. Um, and also Royal Affair is really good as well. And yeah, we Kyle and I, you, we both watched the, the Pusher trilogy. And I remember- no, 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 I I've seen the, the first one. I've not seen the rest. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. I, I, I saw the Pusher trilogy before Casino Royale. And then wow. I was I was like, and then it's only, because in, in the Pusher trilogy, he's like a skinhead thug. So like, it was only sort of like a year after watching Casino Royale. I was like, Oh God, it's like that guy. Like yeah. he's like this, like you know, in a suit, all that stuff, and uh, Christina Rao. And I think um, someone ended up telling Daniel Craig before he's about to start shooting the film, "Oh, um, this this guy is actually going to play Le Chief. And Daniel Craig was like, he he remembered him from watching the Push trilogy. He was like, "Oh well, if anyone's going to beat me up, it's definitely going to be that guy." Isn't it? So <laughs> I've not seen the rest. I managed to have a free trial for a uh, beer fire player, and I watched the first oh, one nice. there, but then it ran out before I could watch two and three. Yeah, that's. That did you like the by... first one? Yeah, I loved it, man. Yeah, that's the what's his name? The guy that did drive was the director, wouldn't he? Nicholas Winding Refn. Yeah. 
But the the main guy in that, uh, I forgot his name, but he was. Uh, did you guys watch Killing Eve? Yeah, I mean, but I only watched the first season. I don't. Yeah, so he's um, uh, what's she called? Not Eve, the other one. I've, it's been ages since I've seen it. The main Scouse woman, the Russian one. Jodie Com- Comer. Yeah, isn't what's it? her character called? I can't remember. Eve. No, Eve's the Korean one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh um, oh I don't, I can't remember now. Yeah, I anyway, do, but her handler, she's got some like. Oh guy, shit! Isn't, isn't he? He's an old guy, though, isn't he? Yeah, that's the guy from Prussia. Really? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, that, that was that's from '96, the first film, man. Right. Wow. Fuck no. Right. Okay. I wonder how old is Mark Mixon? Fifty-six. Uh, you now. Fifty-six. Wow. Yeah, he's fifty-six. Yeah. yeah. Just imagine looking like that at fifty-six. That's the goal, right? But I, I had some thoughts. So this kind of style mm. of film, you're all about they're doing a, an American remake. Why don't they just do the Punisher like this? So you've got the straight <laughs> man, Frank Castle. <laughs> and then you've got microchip and whoever all is, you can get some other dudes in and they're just like the comedy element but then yeah but frank Castle is just 100 percent the straight guy just fucking people up well see that's the thing <sighs> you know i think a lot of people would be quite annoyed watching a what we're expecting to watch a, a no holds barred revenge movie through the punisher punisher and then as i said something always interrupting the flow of of that <laughs> and uh yeah as i said that, that's what i love about this is that uh there's a film called um funny games by um michael Haneke, i think that's how you pronounce his name uh and he and that's sort of like a film that uh, you're about the, re- the original the remake both yeah well, i've that, seen, I've seen the, the michael pitt remake i've not and tim right. roth i've not seen the uh the original that that's sort of a film that is sort of like an anti-horror film is in it saying it's fucking dark man. You, i watched that like you, three in the morning i was like this is dark it's like yeah. it's like basically telling you off it's like saying you should not be enjoying horror films because this is what real life is like i think where this succeeds over funny games is this is saying well no you can still have your genre film you can still have your thrills and your action scenes but you know there just there's something else there and um yeah, I, 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 for me, funny games didn't really work, but this uh, this film, as I, I, I love it. It's brilliant. How did you find out about that film? Funny games. Yeah, my friend randomly lent me the DVD and was like, "Watch this." Ten years ago. Um, I think I heard. I think I hadn't seen or heard the original, and then and then the 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 remake was announced, and then people were sort oh, okay. of right. uh, get, getting so getting all a bit upset about. You heard a, a remake of it. Yeah, oh, yeah. You've seen you've seen it, haven't you, Dave? I've, I've seen both. I've seen the Spanish and the American remake. Uh, it was I didn't think it was that great to be honest. I, I like both to be fair. I really do. I thought I you like didn't both. like it. I th- oh no, no, no. I, I love them. I love them both. Absolutely love them both. I think they're both um, you kind of unique in their own way and both you yeah, both great standalone films. Cool. Would you listen to a podcast with the the three nerds just ripping the shit out of each other for for an hour? Absolutely, <laughs> that, that's what this podcast is. <laughs> yeah, three no, no, that's exactly what's you think, three you think nerds. we're sweary? Fuck me, they're a lot more sweary than we are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like every other word is a c word. <laughs> maybe yeah, maybe they could do like a spin off of, of the movie with uh, three, and then Maz, Maz Mickelson's character just sort of sitting quietly in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> like he is at like he is he at that here. Christmas yeah. like he is that Christmas meal. He's just not he's just sort of sitting down. I love uh, how he's got the he's got the Christmas job prawn as well, which is still yeah. there, just looking like <laughs> fuck what the fuck is happening. <laughs> That's great though, isn't it? That's uh as I said, they could have like this sort of makeshift family and uh uh where he yeah, calls the daughter a chubby little salami as well. <laughs> it's <laughs> 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 outrageous I think that's it anything else so, I yeah yeah, else, I think, no. yeah cool alright then so I've got one word review though shit I better think of one quick okay yeah, it's really uh, hard it's really really hard for this film okay let's hear everyone's one word reviews it's the one word review one word review one word review from us to you Except for Carlos says, oh, that's fucking quality. Andy, what's your one word review? Dangerously good. <laughs> very good. Very good. <laughs> the girl is so dangerous. <laughs> uh, Dave, what's your one word review? Uh, beautifully complex. Okay. 
<laughs> two word reviews. I'm glad. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm glad everyone's <laughs> sticking like. to the brief of one word <laughs> reviews. <laughs> 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 and uh, Kyle's looking at thesaurus.com and he's, uh, what's your one word review? I was going to say surprising because I didn't think it was going to be a, a comedy film at all. Fair play, mate. And like, you know, with, with The Wailing, where they had that little comedy element at the start and Dave and I couldn't really let go of that and forgive it for that. Mm. This, mm. So I was just like, I'm just going to ride with it. And great. Right. Great. Fantastic. Nice. 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 I like so we asked on, on Twitter what were people's thoughts of this film. Liam O'Donnell, the great Liam Do- O'Donnell, who directed the Skylines trilogy, responded to us. Wow. Um, he um, responded saying, it's a masterpiece. Also, please remake with Denzel Washington in New, New York City. No further questions at this time. Wow. So, um, <laughs> so just quickly, Shafi, let's talk about him because there's been a whole Twitter thing this week about him, hasn't there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, they announced Mortal Kombat 2, the sequel to Mortal Kombat. And because the original, the direction was a bit dodgy, there's yeah. basically everyone in the sort of action Twitter sphere has been create this hashtag called Liam for MK2. So we've been campaigning for him to direct it. So. Um, hopefully, wow. if there's Ooh. if there's a, a Warner Brothers executive listening to this podcast, <laughs> um, um, please hire Liam O'Donnell because we think you'd do a great job. And thanks, Liam, for responding to our message. Thank as you, well. Liam. Thank you. That's mad. Wow, Charles. Our great friend Michael Scott from the Action for Everyone podcast. He uh, responded saying, was good, but not great when I watched. And then three months later, I still think about it almost every day. Now mm-hmm. probably appreciate it for the magnificent movie that it is. Wow. wow. Justice. Justice for the film. So thanks, Mike. Uh, you're a legend. Um, and and also Vice Victus um, responded, the great Vice Victus, who has lots of great, meaningful things to say about action movies and is just a great film writer. He responded with basically his thread of of how he feels about the film and a lot of it comes from his um background in the military um wow and so we'd rec- i mean there's a lot for me to read from his thoughts um but what we'd do is recommend going to our twitter handle and um finding that response because he has a lot of meaning i'll put a link shafi in the in the comments in the yeah yeah, in the yeah, episode yeah description yeah. sorry yeah yeah, we'll, we'll put a link in the episode description because he, he does, I mean, just, just the first opening line, he said, if I tried to imagine a movie experience that felt like reopening scar tissue of old wounds with a sharpened Rambo Bowie knife while someone told you the funniest fucking joke you've heard in years, maybe wow. something your whole life, it would be something like Riders of Justice. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's got lots of other meaningful thoughts to say about the film. So, I just want you read it. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, thanks to everyone for getting in touch as well. And um, and if you've got more thoughts about it, you can still get in touch with us. We can read it out in another episode. The next episode, we have a very special guest um, all the way from Melbourne. Australia. She is the host of the Schlockenor podcast, and we've given it as her choice to choose the next film. So awesome! And she oh has left God. a message. She go. has left a message for us, and here we go. Oh, this is exciting! No, wow. Hey guys, uh, this is Lindsay from the Schlockenor podcast, and my choice for the upcoming Who Dropped the Popcorn uh, movie will be the classic exploitation. Turkey Shoot from 1982. Um, I'm really looking forward to this because uh, things are about to get wild. So, yes, the next film that we're going to be watching is a film called Turkey Shoot. So, Ooh, yeah, literally, um, literally never heard of it, man. How do we watch it? It's on, it's on Shudder. Did you tell her this podcast is just 80s films? Does she know? 1984 <laughs> specifically. <laughs> Holy shit. Can I do the, um, the film voice for the trailer? I'll do it. It'll take two seconds. (laughs) In a dystopian future where deviants are held in re-education camps, a freedom fighter and a wrongfully accused prisoner form an alliance to spy their decent oppressor's game of kill or be killed and turn the tide against them. Yeah. Turkey shoot. So it sounds a bit Running Man-esque or like Squid Game-esque. Sounds awesome. Does sound awesome. Okay, Andy, would you care to tell the listeners how they can get in touch with us? Please send any questions, comments, praise, hate mail, or one word reviews to the popcorn post bag at who dropped the popcorn at gmail.com or like, follow, harass us on Twitter at who popcorn or on Instagram at who dropped the popcorn. We are also on YouTube. Search who dropped the popcorn on YouTube. 
You can also leave a review on your podcast app and please remember to like and subscribe. You've been listening to Who Dropped the Popcorn. We really appreciate it. Thanks for giving me that beer, Dave. See you soon. <laughs> Here's Kyle. Kyle. Okay, cheers. Bye. Cheers. See ya. Bye. Layers, 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 layers. Bye. Bye. Bye.